नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय यद्रचालापसंतुष्टो द्वंद्वते तो विमत्सर समा सिद्ध भो he who is satisfied with gain which comes of its own accord who is free from duality and does not envy who is steady in both success and failure is never entangled although performing actions The work of a man who is unattached to the modes of material nature and who is fully situated in transcendental knowledge emerges entirely into transcendence brahma padam brahma havir brahma gno brahma navutam brahme vate nagantavyam brahma karma samadina a person who is fully absorbed in krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activities in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of the same spiritual nature devam ava pareyagnam yogina parupashyate brahmagnam apareyagnam some yogis perfectly worship the demigods by offering different sacrifices to them and some of them offer sacrifices in the fire of the supreme brahman shutra shutra indriyani anye some the unadulted brahmacharis sacrifice the hearing process and the senses in the fire of mental control and others the regulated householders sacrifice the objects of the senses in the fire of the senses sarvan indriya karmani prana karmani chapare atma samyama yoga gno chuvati gyana deepate others who are interested in achieving self realization through control of the mind and senses offer the functions of all the senses and of the life breath as ablations into the fire of the control mind dravya yagna stapo yagna Having accepted strict vows, some become enlightened by sacrificing their possessions, and others by performing severe austerities by practicing the yoga of eightfold mysticism. or by studying the vedas to advance in transcendental knowledge apane juvati pranam pranapanam tatap 
परय प्राण पाना गति रुद्वा प्राणायाम पारयाना अपारे नयत्तहारा प्राण प्राणेश जुवते Still others who are inclined to the process of breath restraint to remain in trance practice by offering the movement of the outgoing breath into the incoming and the incoming breath into the outgoing and thus at last remain in trance stopping all breathing others curtailing the eating process offer the outgoing breath into itself as a sacrifice sarve payate yagna vitu yagna shapi takamashah yagna sheshtam rata bhujo yanti brahma sanatanam all these performers who know the meaning of sacrifice become cleansed of sinful reactions and having tasted the nectar of the results of sacrifices they advance towards the supreme eternal atmosphere nayam lokaste ayakyasya Kutunayaha Guru Satama. O best of the Kuru dynasty, without sacrifice, one can never live happily on this planet or in this life. What then of the next? Evam bahu vidya yagna. Vitata Brahmano Mukha Karma Gyan Vititan Sarvan Evam Natva Vimukshaya All these different types of sacrifice are approved by the Vedas and all of them are born of different types of work. Knowing them as such you will become liberated shri yendra pya mayad yagna gyana yagna parantapa sarvam karma kelam partha gyana parishyam parishyam apyate O chastiser of the enemy, the sacrifice performed in knowledge is better than the mere sacrifice of material possessions. After all, O son of Pritha, all sacrifices of work culminate in transcendental knowledge. That vidhi prani pati na. परिप्रश्ने न सेवया उपदक्षांति ते ज्ञानम् ज्ञाने न सत्वदर्शिना Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth yajnatva na punar moham evam yashya sipandava yena bhutani asheshani rakshasi atmani atho mai having obtained real knowledge from a self realized soul you will never fall again into such illusion for by this knowledge you will see that all living beings are but part of the supreme or in other words that they are mine 
अपीचित आसे पाप व्याहा पाप कृतम सर्वज्ञान प्लाफे नम संत Even if you are considered to be the most sinful of all sinners, when you are situated in a boat of transcendental knowledge, you will be able to cross over the ocean of miseries. Yathadam se samityognar agnir bashma satgur terjana as a blazing fire turns firewood to ashes or arjuna so does the fire of knowledge burn to ashes or reactions to material activities nahi gyanena sadshram Pavitram iha vidyate tat svayam yoga sam siddha kale natmane vindate. In this world, there is nothing so sublime and pure as transcendental knowledge. Such knowledge is the mature fruit of all mysticism. And one who has become accomplished in the practice of devotional service enjoys this knowledge within himself in due course of time. Shratvalabhate jnanam tatpara samyat indriya jnanam labhaparam santim a faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdued, subdues his senses is eligible to achieve such knowledge. And having achieved, achieved it, he quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace. Agnascha Shraddha Nascha Samsayat Mavinashyati Nayam Lokasti Neparo Nasukham Samyatamana But ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain God consciousness. They fall down. For the doubting soul, there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next. Yoga sanyashta karmanam, jnana sanjena samsayam, atmavantam na karmani, nipyat nantita nanjaya. One who acts in devotional service, renouncing the fruits of his actions, and whose doubts have been destroyed by transcendental knowledge, is situated factually in the self. Thus, he is not bound by the reactions of work or conqueror of riches. Tasmadagna sambhutam ritsam jnana sinatmanaha jitvenam samsayam yogam atishto tishta parata. Therefore, the, the doubts of which have arisen in your heart out of ignorance should be slashed by the weapon of knowledge. Armed with yoga, O Bharata, stand and fight. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So nice. Thank you so much, Mataji. Thank you. Uh, um, uh, maybe before I start, I just have to um, say that I didn't know I was doing this till this afternoon. So um, 
I will ask for your blessings and um, also uh, ask for forgiveness if I'm not able to explain anything in more detail because I've just had uh, a few hours to even think about it, but, but I'll try my best. Maybe we can start with, sorry, this is, maybe if you move to, So maybe we can um, first start uh, with verse 4.27. So um, I'll just um, read it once. Sarvani indriya karmani prana karmani chapare atma samyam yoga no juhuvati jnana deepate Sarvani of all Indriya, the senses, karmani, functions, prana karmani, functions of the life breath. Also, um, cha also, apare, others, atma samyam, of controlling the mind, yoga, the linking process, agnau, in the fire of, juhuyati, ju, juvati, Offer Jnana Deepite because of the urge of self realization. Translation Others who are interested in achieving self realization through control of the mind and senses offer the function of all the senses and of the life breath as oblations into the fire of the controlled mind. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The yoga system conceived by Patanjali is referred to herein. In the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali, the soul is called Pratyagatma and Paragatma. As long as the soul is attached to, the, to sense enjoyment, it is called Paragatma. But as soon as the same soul becomes detached from such sense enjoyment, it is called Pratyagatma. The soul is subjected to the functions of 10 kinds of air at work within the body. And this is perceived throughout the breathing system. The Patanjali system of yoga instructs one on how to control the functions of the body's air in a technical manner so that ultimately all the functions of the air within become favorable for purifying the soul of material attachment. According to this yoga system, Pratyagatma is the ultimate goal. This Pratyagatma is withdrawn from activities and matter. The senses interact with the sense objects like the ear for hearing, eyes for seeing, nose for smelling, tongue for tasting, hand for touching and of all of them are thus engaged in activities outside the self. They are called the functions of prana vayu. The apan vayu goes downwards. Vyan vayu acts to shrink and expand. Saman vayu adjusts equilibrium. Uran vayu goes upwards and when one is enlightened, he engages all these in searching for self-realization. Maybe you can start with uh, prayers. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swam Rupa Kadamahiyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam 
श्री राधा कृष्ण पदान सहगना ललिता श्री विथा विशाखान वितंश हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाच कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु देव पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधार शिवासादि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे शिल प्रभुपात की जय थैंक यू ऑल सो मच फॉर मेकिंग टाइम फॉर द चैट सेशन टुडे एज आई सेड I'm trying to say a few things please forgive any offenses i make or any uh, mistakes please feel free to correct and please do participate because uh, as i have been prepared i i may not have as much to talk about so please please participate um so um essentially the the verse says maybe i'll just read the translation again others who are interested in achieving self realization through control of the mind and senses offer the functions of all senses and of the life breath as oblations into the fire of controlled mind so clearly here um um krishna is talking about um um yoga practice and prashila prabhupada has said um this is the patanjali yoga um i think part of ashtang yoga as uh, it is described um here around uh controlling of the life air so we i think most of us who would have done any yoga understand uh, say pranayam clearly the word uh, prana is also used here as it says um you know um prana prana karmani uh, chapare so uh, the word prana is important like i i don't know if uh, people know i mean in english um shri prabhupada has translated as it as life air so essentially we've got the soul the subtle body and and the life air and life air is the one so there are 10 airs five major and five minor as shri prabhupada has explained and they are the uh, that is the me- mechanism through which our soul interacts with our senses and the mind and when we leave this body then our soul the subtle body and the life air all of that moves uh, together into the next body or into the higher realm or the spiritual world um um so so it is explained how yogis who can control the life air or the prana um they can they look to um stop all activities of mind and senses by controlling the life air um um when they withdraw their breath they stop uh, pretty much all activity and senses and in that way they try to um stop all any distractions and uh, if there are no distractions then uh, the idea is that one can reach higher um spiritual destinations because there are no distractions and one can fully concentrate on their uh, goal um, um whatever the yogi's goal may be um we know I mean, krishna explained this explains this in more detail in chapter 6 as part of ashtang yoga i'm sure um uh, all of you um uh, would remember um so in terms of um this particular process uh, i mean i don't know very much about it but um Uh, what i have understood is that the soul is sitting like somewhere in the heart and all these airs are as shil prabhupad is explaining some air is working from the bottom some air on the top and and from all 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 places and the uh, the air is kind of um is is making sure that the soul is kind of uh, um 
in, in its position and, and depending on our consciousness and the life affairs, um, it, it either moves up or down, you know, like yogis who can uh, leave their body right from, from their head. I think the chakras, they, it is called. So there's all these different practices for which I know very little about or nothing about. Um, we know, like, if you go into the into some of the stories that um, um, are mentioned in the shastras, um, it is it is a practice which uh, which used to be uh, quite common in in various yugas. But we also know that uh, they do not always uh, resulted in the desired spiritual outcome. That for us is pure. Uh, pure love of Godhead and uh, as Srila Prabhupada described uh, bhakti as devotional service to the Lord. Um, um, we know of a story of Vishwamitra, how he practiced um, the yoga kriya for uh, thousands of years and um, how some distractions like Menaka or um, other um, apsaras from heavenly planets, he could get distracted. So it's definitely not a sure shot process. We also know about, I think, Saubari Muni, who, um, uh, who was practicing this underwater. In fact, um, I think it's explained um, how he was doing this uh, practice for um, many thousands of years. And, and then um, he, I think he sees um, uh, fish um, 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 mating, and that's when um, his desires uh, get, um, um, he, he starts to have desire to marry himself, and then he, um, uh, he goes to the king, he wants to, he wanted to marry all of the eight, um, daughters of the king. So there, there are instances um, where um, uh, this practice is done to try to control the mind and senses, but we know it is so difficult to control the mind. Um, uh, in fact, we all know uh, how Arjuna says, like, I mean, it's almost impossible, right? Mind is like um, trying to control the wind. And it's almost impossible to control Krishna. And, uh, and we find, find the same. In fact, it's explained um, about other senses as well, how difficult are they to control. Like, I mean, we know about tongue. Tongue, we often say things or speak <laughs> uh, various things. Um, and it's, it's really um, hard to control when we say things. Also eating. Um, it's, it's not that easy, you know, today is Ikadashi, in fact, Devutni Ikadashi, and um, just that one day every fortnight is so hard to control, and this is the auspicious occasion of Bhishpajak, and obviously some devotees are so exalted who are practicing, um, uh, like uh, full fasting or fasting using Panchagavya, they have huge uh, sense control, but for most, most normal people, it's very hard to control the tongue, which is kind of really um, one of the most important senses to control or the, one of the primary senses. I mean, the same goes with our ears. Um, we all know about music, whether it's some people uh, have got a taste for rock music or Bollywood music, whatever it is. It's, I mean, ears, it's so difficult to control. So similarly, um, like it's also explained, and even in Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, like, and we see in this world, right? Even people who are 60, 70 years old, they want to marry um, young, uh, 16, 18, 20 year old, because their senses are just so hard to control. And that's um, um, whatever the, the yogic practices, um, we know they are not, um, not that easy to practice because in this yoga, it's even um, not prescribed as uh, as the yoga dharma, and um, and and we know that even in the yugas where it was um, prescribed, or people lived for thousands of years and they could practice it, it wasn't that easy. So Srila Prabhupada has given us uh, the process, and um, maybe I'll share share a verse that 
he could so often, I mean, maybe a couple of verses, maybe just give me one second. I were to go. So um, yeah, I, I think that this this one is quite a beautiful verse where um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of uh, few know from um, Bhakti Rasamrita uh, Ras Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu how um, uh, it said Sarvapadi Vinir Muktam Tad Paravar uh, Paratvena Nirmalam. Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam, Bhakti, Ruchate. Bhakti or devotional service means engaging all our senses in the service of the Lord. So you're talking about the senses. So it's saying it, the practice which we do is about engaging the service in the, all the senses in the service of the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the master of all senses. So uh, it, uh, yeah, let me complete it. When the spirit soul renders service unto the Supreme, there are two side effects. One is freed from all material designations and one one's senses are purified simply by being employed in the service of the Lord. So um, we know that one of the names of Krishna is Rishikesha. In fact, uh, Arjuna calls him Rishikesha. Uh, a few times in Bhagavad Gita, while the uh, within Bhagavad Gita conversation, and uh, Rishikesha stands for master of senses. So instead of trying to be the controller of our senses and trying to control them, the best way is to engage them to the one who who has full control of them, and then it is very easy to control our senses. And that's what Srila Prabhupada has uh, given us as the process to. Uh, engage our senses in the service of the Supreme, and then slowly um, we are freed from material designations and our senses are purified. And, and how we do that actually is another shloka from, um, uh, um, from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and it's also in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, so this, this is about the tongue, the, uh, the sense which is most difficult to control and we were talking about Atashi Krishna Namadi Nabhavet Graham Indriya Swayam Eva Spiriti Ada. So I'm sure all of us have heard this multiple times, but I'll just repeat. Uh, therefore, material senses cannot appreciate Krishna's holy name, form, qualities, and pastimes. Um, when a conditioned soul, is awakened to Krishna consciousness and renders service by using his tongue to chant the Lord's holy name and taste the remnants of the Lord's food. The tongue is purified and one gradually comes to understand who Krishna really is. So even though we may want to <laughs> engage all our senses, it's not that easy because we've got material senses as in the previous verse, we know our senses are imperfect and impure. And the way, um, and we may not fully appreciate the holy name, um, the form, the qualities, and pastimes of the Lord. But when we use our tongue to do two things, and Srila Prabhupada has emphasized on those two things, is take the holy name and uh, and and have prashadam all the time. Then that's when our, uh, you know um, our uh, uh, senses get purified and the divine knowledge is revealed into us. Um, maybe I'll, um, I mean, this this week is very special. I mean, today is very special. It is Devutni Kadashi, right? As as we all know, um, today is the day when uh, uh, the Lord who is uh, apparently sleeping or resting, he wakes up and uh, um, uh, and you know, like um, we normally, when we uh, wake Krishna, we um, we say this, which I, I really love. Um, I mean, maybe we can we can chant this together. Uttishto Uttishto Govinda Uttishto Garuda Dudhyadhaja Uttishta Kamala Kanta Trelokeyam Mangalam Kuru Aveko Govinda Avek the one with the Garuda in sign in his flag, awake the beloved of Lakshmi, bless the welfare of all three worlds. 
Um, and, and, and the nice thing about today and this week is it's also called Bhishma Pancha. Um, we all know um, the life story of Bhishma Dev, which is, which is so, so special. Um, Bhishma Dev um, um, lived um, the life um, as an in an exemplary way. And also he left, um, and I'll come back to the verse. I mean, Bhishma Dev was a, a real example as to how he left the body and, and when he left it, how he brought the life here together. So it's, it's a really um, exemplary um, 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 personality. We all know he's one of the 12 Mahajans and Mahajana, uh, Maha, Mahajan Yenagata. Uh, so we, we, like all the devotees who are sincere in the services, should follow one of the 12 Mahajans. In fact, Yamraj himself is one of the Mahajans has said that if you follow the Mahajans, then you don't have to see my face in, in Yamalok. And, um, and Bhishwadev's story is, um, um, we, we all know, is born, um, um, his mother was um, Ganga Devi and uh, father Shantanu, and how he, um, in order to please his father, takes two Bhishma vow, Bhishma meaning really, um, um, uh, intense or um, really big uh, vows and uh, um, uh, one that um, he will um, um, he will not um, have the kingdom he will he will relinquish his right to the kingdom because you know his father had made him the crown prince and 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 the, my son is just saying from the back that and the second vow he took was, that he will he will never marry, um, which um, uh, which is amazing for um, for a person living in royal palace uh, to relinquish all the objects of sense enjoyment um, uh, like being the king, name, fame, everything which comes with it, and and to not marry. Um, at all in an environment when he was surrounded by maid servants and, and other beautiful princesses who on many occasions wanted uh, him to marry. I mean, we have got the story of Amba and so, so many, so many princesses wanted to marry Bhishma there. And he had all the, um, you know, um, um, uh, like, uh, from a, apparently um, like um, from, from an outside perspective, like um, he, he, there's, there's nothing stopping him from doing so, but he, he, he managed his senses um, really well. And then, then how he left his body um, is also exemplary. Um, uh, we all know he was lying on the battlefield on a bed of arrows and um, and he was um, uh, obviously uh, Lord, the Lord himself um, um, came. I mean, it is said, it is explained how Bhishma Dev himself kept the Vrata of Bhishma Panchak, which is one of the many reasons why he, uh, he left in this way. So, so please do look out for what's Bhishma Panchak Vrata and, and try to do whatever you can for this um, period. As it is said, it is, uh, bumper clearance sale. So while Karthik is a sale and you get thousand times benefit, Bhishma Panchak, you get even thousand times, thousand times benefit. So do look it out. But it's um, it's amazing how um, uh, Bhishma Dev uh, left his body. Let me share my screen again. There's one verse I wanted to um, read very quickly. It's uh, first canto, ninth chapter. Um, where I'll, I'll just read the translation. Um, Bhishma Dev said, let me now invest my thinking, feeling and willing, um, which were so long engaged in different subjects and occupational duties uh, in the all powerful Lord Sri Krishna. He is always self-satisfied, but sometimes being the leader of the devotees, he enjoys transcendental pleasure by descending to the material world. Although from him, only the material world is created. 
So um, we were talking about mind, the senses. So, so he invested his thinking, feeling, willing into none other than the Lord himself. As it is said in the previous verses, uh, please, please try and read. This is, I think, um, uh, in the first canto, ninth chapter. And it's amazing how he has um, completely um, like focused. So he, he withdrew, for, he was first giving instructions to Yudhishthira Maharaj. He, he stopped speaking. He, his eyes focused on Lord Sri Krishna, his, his mind, his everything focused on Krishna. He was remembering how Krishna and he were on the battlefield and the different scenes, but fully absorbed in Krishna and he was fully self-satisfied. Um, and that's how he left his body and he, he, he went, went, to the, um, uh, went to the Lord. Or, or went back to Godhead. So um, yeah, on the special occasion of Bhishma Panchara, I think we should definitely um, learn from him and take advantage. Um, yeah, I'll again say, please um, uh, excuse any mistakes and um, open to any comments or, or questions. Please be gentle um, if you have any. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hi Krishna. Thank you for your wonderful class. Um, you know, I think uh, yeah, you mentioned this um, uh, tongue is the, the very difficult sense to control. Um, I'm not sure if I missed it. Can you give any suggestions or ideas? How can we basically practice the controlling, maybe not only tongue, other senses as well, please? So uh, Srila Prabhupada said two things, right? I think I, I tried to say, maybe I'll repeat it again. Sevon Mukha Jivhado. So basically there are two things which we need to engage a tongue in. One is um, in um, honoring or eating only prasadam. So food which is offered to Lord Sri Krishna. Um, and we, we need to try and uh, not eat anything which is against uh, the religious principles, meaning meat, um, or any um, anything which is um, ideally anything which is not offered to Krishna at all, we should try and um, uh, and not eat it at all. And slowly that will purify our tongue. And the other other thing we need to do with our tongue is to chant the holy name. So um, the more we chant the holy name again, that will purify our tongue over a period of time and. Again, we will we will see the change in uh, um, how how and what our tongue does. Uh, so that's that's what I would say. I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything. Thanks, Prabhu. Um, in a honoring prasadam, uh, what more we should honor it to get the more benefit? Are more quicker purifying our tongue. Oh wow! Um, uh, you know, like uh, it is. Uh, we our mood. Uh, I'm probably not very well qualified, but I can say what I've heard. Um, you know, um, when when Lord has eaten something, it's we need to we need to look at the prasadam and we need to feel that this has already been had by the Lord, and these are the remnants of the food stuff from, from him. And we need to be thankful first because Lord is the proprietor of everything, right? So he is, um, he owns everything. We need to be thankful that he is, um, he has given us that. And we need to be relishing and joyful that this has been already tasted by the Lord. So this is even like, um, uh, you know, it is, it has got the, uh, um, got even the saliva of the Lord in the food, and we need to just ha have that um, that feeling that uh, th this, I mean, th this is invaluable. Like, and we we are so fortunate. We need to be grateful that um, we are in this <laughs> in this fortunate position that we are not only getting food, but also we are able to honor Krishna Prashad 
and some sometimes it's very difficult to forget because you're so busy and uh, doing various things in our day-to-day -day life that we may not appreciate what we are getting. And also, I would, I mean, the second thing I would say is if you haven't been when COVID and everything goes away, please do visit Jagannath Puri. Because Jagannath Puri, like Jagannath as a Lord, he likes to eat, right? He gave, like the King Indradumna asked for a, asked for a boon to the Lord that, I mean, a few boons, one, um, you will not sleep, you will continuously give darshan. But the, another boon was, uh, you will constantly eat. And even before, you know, you're, you've just finished eating, you wash your hands and then you will start eating again. So in Jagannath Puri, like, um, they, um, like they offer all the time, right? It's, they call it Chappan Gubog, but Jagannath is eating all the time. And if you visit Jagannath Puri, you look at Lord's Kitchen, but also where you get the Mahaprasad, it's called Anand Bazaar. And, and you look at the mood of the residents of Puri. I've, I've seen that, right? So typically when you have, um, ma, like when you eat something and then you, something is left, um, you don't want to have it if it is not clean, right? And in Jagannath Puri, like the mood of the people living there is, oh, this is Jagannath Mahaprasad. It doesn't get juta at all. It, it like, they are, they're so like um, loving to, towards the Lord, but also the Mahaprasad. Like you have to like, just see how they, the, the kind of, you know, attachment they have for Mahaprasad there in Jagannath Puri. It's amazing. I don't know if I answered your question, Prabhu. No, I answered Prabhuji. Thank you very much. I haven't visited Jagannath Puri, but I have to. I have planned to go. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Prabhuji. Thank Any any other comments from anyone? If not, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for bearing with me. Um, and I, I think, do we now have Damodar Rash to come? Yes, Prabhuji. We have today we have Shyam Prabhu singing the Damodar Ashtakam and Venkat Prabhu doing the English translation. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Damodar Ashtakam ki jai. You can hear me okay, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Nama Vishwaram Sachetananda Rupam Lasakundalam Gokule Prajamanam Nama Vishwaram Sachetananda Rupam Lasakundalam Gokule Prajamanam Yashoda biyo loka ladavamanam Param rustana chanta dodrutya gopya Yashoda biyo loka ladavamanam Param rustana chanta dodrutya gopya Rudanta Mohunitram Yukmam Rujantam Karam Bhoja Yukme Nasa Jantanitram Moho Swasa Kanta Sridi Kanta Kanta Dita Graivam Damodaram Vatibhadam Iti Drikswa Lila Vai Ananda Kundi Vago Shamni Majanta Madhya Payantam Tade Shita Jesho Bhaktai Ditatvam Una Premata Samsata Vriti Bandi Varam Deva Mocham Mocham Vadimba Nachanyam Vriniham Vadeshadaniha Idam Deva Purnada 
Thank you, Prabhuji. I'll read the English uh, translation now. To the Supreme Lord, whose form is the embodiment of eternal existence, knowledge, and bliss, whose shark shaped earrings are swinging to and fro, who is beautifully shining in the divine realm of Gokula, who I, due to the offense of breaking the pot of yogurt that his mother was turning into butter, and then stealing the butter that was kept hanging from a swing, is quickly running from the wooden grinding mortar in fear of Mother Yasoda, but who has been caught from behind by her who ran after him with greater speed. To that Supreme Lord, Sri Damodara, I offer my humble obeisances. Seeing the whipping stick in his mother's hand, he is crying and rubbing his eyes again and again with his two lotus hands. His eyes are filled with fear and the necklace of pearls around his neck, which is mocked with three lines like a conchal, is shaking because of his quick breathing due to crying. To this Supreme Lord, Sri Damodara, whose belly is bound not with ropes but with his mother's pure love, I offer my humble obeisances. 
by such childhood pastimes as this, he is drowning the inhabitants of Gokula in pools of ecstasy and is revealing to those devotees who are observed in knowledge of his supreme majesty and opulence that he is only conquered by devotees whose pure love is imbued with intimacy and is free from all conceptions of awe and reverence. With great love, I again offer my obeisances to Lord Damodara hundreds and hundreds of times. O oh Lord, although you are able to give all kinds of benedictions, I do not pray to you for the boon of impersonal liberation, nor the highest liberation of eternal life in Vaikuntha, nor any other boon which may be obtained by executing the nine process of bhakti. O oh Lord, I simply wish that this form of yours as Bala Gopala in Vrindavan may ever be manifest in my heart, for what is the use to me of any other boon besides this? O oh Lord, your latest face, which is encircled by locks of soft black hair tinged with red, is kissed again and again by Mother Esoda, and your lips are reddish like the bimba fruit. May this beautiful vision of your lotus face be ever manifest in my heart. Thousands and thousands of other benedictions are of no use to me. O Supreme Godhead, I offer my obeisance unto you. O Dhammadara, O Ananta, O Vishnu, O Master, O my Lord, be pleased upon me. By severing your glance of mercy upon me, deliver this poor ignorant fool who is immersed in an ocean of worldly sorrows and become visible to my eyes. O Lord Dhammadara, just as two sons of Kuvera, Managriva and Nalakuvera, were delivered from the curse of Narada and made into great devotees by you in your form as a baby tied with rope to a wooden grinding motor. In the same way, please give it to me your own Prema Bhakti. I only long for this and have no desire for any kind of liberation. O Lord Damodara, I first of all offer my obeisance to you, the brilliant effulgent rope which binds your belly. I then offer my obeisance to your belly, which is the abode of the entire universe. I humbly bow down to your most beloved Srimati Radharani, and I offer all obeisance to you, the Supreme Lord, who displays unlimited pastimes. And sorry for everyone if I made any mistakes in reading. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Is there anything else you normally do? You know? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, very, very beautiful class with a great insight. It's it's amazing. Um, feel fortunate to uh, have joined this class today. Thank you. Uh, just wondering on the Bhishma Panchaka, so is there anything recommended for devotees to, you know, kind of observe these five days in any sort? Because I've heard this from other sampradayas. Uh, yeah. This has a great significance, but anything in in our movement for this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Like devotees do multiple levels of uh, of fasting and also increased, you know, like we've got both uh, austerity or in in loving service of the Lord, but also increased devotional practices. So um, typically there are um, three levels of of fasting, and I mean devotees have got a fourth one as well. So I think the most um, um, like uh, stringent or difficult one to follow is. Like, I think there's different days. First day, you can have a little bit of cow dung. Second day, uh, gomutra. And then um, I think yogurt, uh, milk, and then uh, panchagavya. That's some devotees uh, do follow that. Um, there is uh, a second level for those who cannot follow that, which is uh, just have fruits and roots, not even milk. Um, I think there is a evolved version of that, which some devotees keep, which is just do Ikadashi all of the five days. And then, um, then there is another level which, which is prescribed around uh, um, have Havishya. So if you search it up on the internet, you will get the recipe for that. It's kind of a kitchari, but again, like that's, so you can follow that. There's a prescribed way to break your fast as well. So that's, that's that. But um, as I said, it is bumper clear and sale, even if you're not able to keep the fasting or the further austerities, you should try and um, uh, do do something something more for the for the Lord, like um, um, like at, at the very least um, 
uh, offer lamp to the Lord um, or do more chanting, do more reading, just increase increase sadhana. And that's what we as devotees can try and, and fit it into our schedule to try to remember the Lord more and ideally all the time, which is our purpose in life, right? Always remember Krishna and never forget him. So this is the last five days of the Kartika Man Prabhuji. Correct. So today is the first day till Friday. That's that's Bhishma Pancha. And do we do this for uh, Bhishma Deva? Yeah, we good? yeah, yeah, we, we do remember Bhishma Dev as well the, during all the days. This Rat used to be called, I think, Vishnu uh, Panchak, and then when Bhishma Dev kept it, it has been renamed, and the Lord said it'll be called Bhishma Pancha. So, so yeah, so it's like me and my wife, we sat down and we read uh, in first canto chapter nine today, even if and we just read the translations, it is very nice. So if you can remember Bhishma Dev every day as well, it's very nice. Um, uh, and, and also I think worship the Lord because Bhishma Dev is one of the Mahajans, he'll be pleased if we worship his object of worship who is uh, uh, Lord Krishna himself. So. So we need to do both. Of course, this is very good information. I was looking for quite some time. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hello. Uh, may I ask uh, something? Yeah, please. Please, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the class, first of all. I just uh, wanted to ask about the uh, context of the verse, uh, Uttishta Govinda. Is it? Yeah, I mean, uh, so uh, typically. What's the meaning yeah. of the verse and what is the context? So, in, in, yeah, so every day in the temple when they wake the deities up, they, they, they chant this verse. And today, especially because it is Dev, uh, Dev Uthani Kadashi, like the Lord wakes up. So it's nice to chant this at your home to your deities because he's, it's, it's special, right? The Lord um, okay. is, is waking up. So that's is it an everyday verse then? Uh, yeah, you can chant every day when you wake the deities up. That's okay. It's for the temple. Okay. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Pranam. Hare Krishna. But but today, today is a special day to, to chant the verse. Yeah. That's thank it. you. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Sorry, just another question. Um I have I had read sometime in the past that where Srila Prabhupada says that if one forgets or somehow unable to fast on Ikadashi day. Uh, they can still follow that on Dwadashi. Has anyone got any information on this one for my double confirmation, please? Yeah, if uh, so, there's yeah, lots lots of things. So if you if one forgets on Ikashi, you can do it on Dwadashi. Then even if some mistakes may have happened, then there is um, we all know uh, Bhima Nirjal Ikadashi, which happens once in a year during summertime. Uh, so if you keep Nirjal Ikadashi, you at least get the um, uh, I mean, it's considered that you've kept all Ikadashis. And then uh, this Bhishma Panchak, especially like if you keep Bhishma Panchak, then again, um, uh, if even if we have made any mistakes during Kadashi or other times, it's it's negated. But yes, we should we should try and do as much as we can and and try to uh, try to observe. People who are like really old or uh, with not very good health and uh, kids so is that, okay that they skip the rest of the ekadashis and follow nirjal ekadashi alone i mean if um uh, Prabhupada is uh, is very kind or even like you know like in india when people used uh, there were so such strict rules and Prabhupada has already um made it easier right like the vegetables which we are allowed to have in ikadashi and others so if someone is not well so so it, it, for any fasting or anything like i think we just need to make sure that um uh, it should not impact our service and the devotional service what's what's more important is our devotional service our chanting our services in the temple like even like for nirjala ikadashi it is said if if your body does not allow you to keep nirjala try and do as much as you can but then, uh, I mean, Krishna is bhav, Janardana. We should, but we should not use that as an excuse to not do what we are supposed to do. The the right standard is um, as prescribed. But if someone is not able to do or is going to impact their service or their health very badly, then it is okay to not do and 
focus on the positives that we can we are allowed we can do. So at least that's my understanding. I hope, uh, yeah. At least that's <laughs> how we would go about it. What is the logic of? I mean, when the grains get sinful on the Ekadashi day, what is the logic in um, actually leaving the grains on the Dwadashi day? Yeah, there is. Uh, there are multiple reasons. I think there's a class by Ambrayan the Prabhu on that, which he gave in the Boston Temple. Search for Ekadashi and Ambrayan the Prabhu. Like he gives lots of scientific reasons. Like this day, the the positioning of the moon and others is such that you know, like. Uh, what 70-75 percent of a body is is made of uh, water, and it's better to fast. In fact, I mean, we, me and my wife were discussing, like, I mean, the, all this intermittent fasting and everything. Like, science has proven that it is nice to fast every so often and not have grains. But then also there is the logic by uh, shastras as to, yeah, this is the day when. The Lord is uh, is pleased. There's a story about uh, Mother Ekadashi and how she protects the Lord once. And Lord says, whoever will uh, fast on this day will will um, he. This is a day which will be very dear to him, and uh, he he will be pleased. So there and there are lots of lots of other um, stories. So please do um, look for look for it. Thank you, Prabhu Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hello. On the uh, topic of Ikadashi, I'm not much of a follower, so sorry. I just wanted to, to know, you know, uh, what are the rules of fasting on of uh, on Ikadashi day? I mean, what do you actually do? What did the uh, uh, do you fast the whole day or you so, so, so did fasting? I think uh, the, the the I don't the follow, point is... but sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I just wanted some information on it. Thank you. I'm sure devotees will be happy to provide, but just in short, the principle is we try to remember the Lord more, right? Oh, okay. So, so if we are, I mean, if we are doing more chanting, we are trying to remember him more, then that's nicer. Also, because we don't want to be engaged in cooking and eating all the time, the idea yeah. is we have light, we have fruits, we have vegetables and others. So that's the principle. So, but now, obviously, in like in many households, including mine, like we have lots of Ikadashi preps. There is a full Ikadashi recipe book, Mataji. I'm sure if you ask, I, I don't know, like if you know other devotees or if if you maybe message me separately or I can connect you with my wife who can send you Ikadashi yeah, book. Because I don't know much people. Yeah. Is, followers of Ekadashi and all this stuff. So uh, I don't know if, if one of the Mataji is on the call, maybe Hema Mataji, is it okay if uh, Surbhi Mataji could contact you and you can provide that? Or uh, Of course, of course, Prabhuji, there is just so you. much one can eat on this yes. day, absolutely. And just, uh, do you get thoughts of food when you fast and is it okay to have thoughts of food? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, it's just a general question. What is the purpose? Uh, uh, I mean, we the, th the thoughts of food, uh, will uh, will thoughts of food uh, defeat the purpose of fasting? The, the idea is to uh, not think not about scientifically, but, you know, mentally speaking, you know. No, the idea is to not think about fasting, you know. But yeah. mentally, if your thought goes towards, oh, I'm hungry or something like that, it, I mean. I, I think we need we need to pray, right? Because the Lord Lord is the one who gives remembrance, and He is the one who gives forgetfulness. So we need to pray to Him that I would like to observe this, and I would like to remember You more, and and those thoughts will will be less. Okay. I I don't like. I mean, we sometimes when we are busy, we don't like eat or <laughs> like yeah, the it. children when they're watching television, they may not eat food. Oh, they hardly eat. Yeah, uh, exactly. So like, it's all about putting a mind and consciousness in Lord's service and his thoughts. And so you are then... eating in the evening, is it? Do you break the fast in the evening? No, or no, it's day? next day. So so maybe, day, day, day. Day, maybe if you connect with Surbhi Mataji. That's all right, yeah. Thank you so online. much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you, you. You have got Hema Mataji's number or I don't know. Uh, how... I am in the chat group, so I'll, I'll find out the number. Yes, yes, please. please. Pranam, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Sorry we ran over. But um, yeah, and please forgive any mistakes I may have done. Hare Krishna.
प्रभुपाद की जय जय थैंक यू प्रभु जी धन्यवाद